Hey there, Sagittarius. Thank you so much for joining me for this full moon reading for February 27th. I'm super excited about this reading, fellow Sag. So yes, Sagittarius is my sun sign. Pisces is my moon. Leo is my ascending. Let's just get it all out there. Um, I am Infinity. In case you don't know me, I am a psychic, physical empath, medical medium, a um, astral meditation guide, channeler. Uh, I work with animals and people. I'm a distance energy healer. I work worldwide, a soul, um, an ascension guide, and offer a lot of different services from Terra and Oracle to energy healing for yourself, for your animals. So just please visit my website at uh, thehealingbutterfly.org. I also um, have a, uh, a few for currently eBooks on my website that are really, really helpful and informative and um, lots of awesome meditations that I channel uh, for helping us to connect and heal and all sorts of awesome stuff. So please check those out. I may, those may come up um, in the reading. Who knows? So this full moon set of readings has changed from doing elemental readings to doing individual sign readings, and then just going out of order and using my pendulum, tapping into the different signs, and then getting a, a waiting to get a yes on the one I'm going to do first, second, and this is the third. First, I started with Capricorn, then I did Virgo, and now it's Sagittarius. Um, and so I have all of my tarot cards, all of my oracle cards. I, I think I have one, two, three, four, five decks of tarot and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight decks of oracle. So they're all up for grabs here. Um, it just depends on where I'm guided for what different sign. Um, these are also tending to be last two. We're nearly an hour long. <laughs> um, didn't feel like it. And, you know, stuff just takes, you know, it's just, it is what it is. I can't, I try to go fast. I try to do as I'm guided and go fast. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. My stuff tends to be a little longer. So if that's not for you, I'm sorry. Hopefully it is, and hopefully this reading will um, resonate for you. Okay, so let's get going here. Let me see what cards we're going to use. Okay, I keep picking up on the Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle what that looks like. <laughs> um, the Heart of Fairy Oracle, haven't used this one yet in these reads. Ology Oracle. Lightseer's Tarot. Shadowscapes Tarot, and looks like that's it. Okay, alrighty. Let's see what we get here and what order we're going in. We have Shadowscapes Tarot, Lightseers Tarot, Moonology. I feel like I'm starting with the Moonology. Let's go there. So. We are going to be tapping in with the energies. Well, uh, well, I guess we are into the 23rd. It is 1 a.m. here in the Pacific on the 23rd. I did start these readings on the 22nd, so it feels like the 22nd to me. So I may refer to it as today instead of yesterday for the portal. I knew I had to. Uh, but anyway, so today uh, was the 2-22-2021 portal for divine union that's for helping us connect and integrate with our um our souls and then you know divine union with our souls with our guides with um all of it are connected to us on the other side as well as 
um, people incarnate that we're supposed to connect to our divine unions with their soul family, soul mates, twin flames, if you got them. So anyway, and then we have this 27th of February, uh, full moon in Virgo and, um, very, very intense energies coming through with, with that, uh, with this full moon coming up, it's really amplifying these energies before we get um, into the new month and into the new Stargate on March 3rd. Um, and then our next new moon is on the 13th, which is the land, our landing or ending official ending day of the Stargate. Cause those are 10 official days in the Stargate and then one day for landing. And we land on that 13th. So anyway, um, a lot of energy is coming up at this time, especially um, in this in between, between the portal and the full moon. So we're getting these, uh, these readings to really help us to, you know, what we need to do or what's coming uh, within these energies between the new moon on the 11th, the portal on the 22nd and the full moon on the 27th. Okay, first cards here. Your dreams need a practical plan. Full moon in Taurus. Sagittarius. Your dreams need a practical plan. And then show the world the real you with full moon in Aquarius. Ah, show the world the real you. No more holding back, I'm hearing. Time to get out into the light. Well, hmm, I can relate to that. <laughs> Wanting to be hidden in my little cave, but need to be forced out into the world. Um, definitely, I'm hearing one more with the moonology. One more with the moonology. Your dreams need a practical plan. Well, that sounds fair. That sounds fair. I've been thinking that myself. Whoa, that's a lot of cards. I'm gonna not even look and put them all back because a whole bunch of cards fell. Too much, too much. There we go. Uh, balance, spirituality, and practicality. Full moon in Pisces. Wow, three full moons. Oh boy. <laughs> Practice spiritual and practicality. Your dreams need a practical plan. So we're getting pr being practical here. Show the world the real you. So it's just, I'm hearing just getting a little organized, having a regimen, um, kind of things like that. I could definitely use that kind of structure. I'm hearing structure your spirituality and your practicality. I think I actually got that card last time too. So it's a good idea to, to, to balance that. I tend to be maybe a lot in the spirituality part of things and maybe not so practical, but again, sometimes you're just, you know, doing as you're guided, but I'm feeling with that. It's a, um, well, you know what? Let's read. Let's read. Let's just read. Balance, spirituality, and practicality. Oh, nearly right to it. Okay. Have you been so head in the clouds that you've lost touch with reality? If so, take this card as a sign that you need to pay attention and make a concerted effort to move towards your goals. The more practical steps you can take, the better it, the better the better. It's time to find a, the inner balance between your responsibilities and your dreams. Meditate on your question and the solution to your issue may now come through very clearly. If you're in a tricky situation because you've been acting the martyr, this card will be a message from the cosmos to drop the act for everyone's sake. Attune with the moon. Meditate every day and see what comes to you. Answers will come. You're super romantic, but not super, but what? <laughs> you're in a you're in a super romantic, but not super realistic state. Oh, I see. Follow your intuition. It won't let you down. At worst, this card can be can herald 
the end of a dream, the person you're acquiring about is a soulmate and avoid substance abuse. The teaching Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. So the full moon in Pisces symbolically marks endings. When the moon, when the full moon is in Pisces or or whenever you pull this card, it's time to dive deep into your emotions. Practicality is at odds with the numerous Piscean uh, energies that have no borders. So feel your way now. Psychic ability is heightened when the full moon is in Pisces and soulmates now connect. It's also a time to send out your dreams to the universe, releasing your fears. Well, what do you know? I just did a meditation. I just... Uh, uploaded a meditation today or the 22nd that was uh for releasing and healing fears so i'm definitely in alignment with that it's on my youtube channel it's uh one of these last videos that i i just posted so please take a look at that it's very powerful very healing i highly suggest you do it um and so uh you know what I'm feeling with this is like, what, forget about the shoulds and let's think about what, what you want to do. And just personally, that's what I've been feeling over the last little bit. And again, um, this reading is for the full moon. But these energy, it's important with this full moon, this energies that the full moon is bringing in. We've got three full moons, my fellow Sagittarians. Three full moons, three very powerful moons, three full moons. Um, your dreams need a practical plan. Show the world the real you and balance spirituality and practicality. And even these colors are like, we got the purple in the middle and the blues on the outside very um interesting here kind of balanced on the outside um i do feel this this show the world the real you yeah and that's tied into this balanced spirituality and practicality like again it's not about what you think people want because they want you naturally authentically the people are going to gravitate towards you for whatever it is that you do um and who you are and i know this for myself because i'm a psychic i'm an empath i'm a healer um and so people need to vibrate to me to find me to, to be into who and what i am and what i provide and and all of that stuff so it i have to work in the pocket of being authentic and being me or else that just wouldn't work for people or myself. It would just be very, very uncomfortable. But there's still times where I'm like, what should I be doing? Like, what do people need? What do I, what should, you know, like I'm always asking and then I'm always guided at the same time. So even today, like I thought like the guidance that came in weeks ago was that I was gonna do these elemental readings like fire, water, earth, air, but this is what I did for the full moon and then the new moon. That's what I was gonna do for this again for the full moon. But then it was like, I just started feeling like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do, I want to do the signs individually. And I don't want to just pick a couple of decks. I want it to be really free flowing. And, and I'm constantly, and that's why I opened up with, I hope this isn't too long. I know I talk a lot, but there's a lot that needs to come out. Um, and, and I know that, that, you know, time is important and stuff like that. And, you know, it's not, it's not that I don't respect people's times when things go long, meditations go long. I, they're channeled to me. I don't design them. When it comes to readings, I pull the cards. I talk about what we need to talk about and it is however long that it is. Um, but I do sometimes feel like, oh, I need to switch and I need to change, you know? Um, and the more I'm thinking about it, I, I, I can't worry myself with, what, with anything other than the way that, that it comes out for, for me. And, and I think that that's really like, once you, once you decide that, then it's build a plan around that. Just 
how it flows. Okay, card number 25, the, the Grail Fairy, fertility, the return of life, health, and life cycles. I've never seen this card before. This is a pretty new deck to me, and I don't look ahead of time. This is a really cool, <laughs> this is a really cool card. I love that. Again, another full moon. Whoa, whoa. Okay, we're really looking, this energy with this full moon is going to be transformative, just so intensely, like, like I'm feeling like things that have been kind of up in the air and not necessarily in alignment and shifting and all this stuff that it's just going to go click, 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 and like come into alignment here. Um, and this makes me excited, people. <laughs> very excited. Uh, very, very excited. Okay, again, card number 25. Let's see. Um, oh my goodness. The Grail Fairy. Fertility, the return of life, health, life cycles. Okay, here we go. You have felt as though your life has not been flowing and a sense of being stuck has. <laughs> That's pretty much what I just said. It was hilarious. If it has not been I'm like things have just been here and there are not straight and then just. Yeah, that's exactly the vibe I just got. And I swear we've never seen this card before. That was funny. Um, you have felt as though your life has has not been flowing and a sense of being stuck has pervaded your days. Uh, no longer, sweet one, for as you see, this beautiful fairy is bathing in the pool of the moon and holding up her magical chalice of life to collect the enchanted waters, which will soon be raining on you. Whoa, blessing you with their cleansing and powerful healing properties. With this water, she will bless not only you with the unfurling of dreams and wishes, but she will also bless the women who wish to bring forth their babes and the crops so they will drive their way through the earth to the light. She will sprinkle them on what seems to be dead and dry and beyond life and renew the dormant life force within them. She knows that she, as she does this, she honors the turning of the wheel of life and the cycles through which all move. Maiden, mother, and crone are all sacred and have their time and all have their time. But when we see this fairy, we know that we will that we are still in the time when our own waters will flow and our own cycles will renew again. Ah, the chalice will preserve and store the life-giving waters, but those who she blesses with this will bring forth creative ideas, babies, artworks, dreams, loving partnerships, and be cleansed and renewed. Oh my God, that's so funny. That is my new service that I, I just was guided to create. And I woke up the other day and I, my eyes opened. I'm like, it's called renew now. And I just knew that that's because I'm, uh, and that's what it's called renew now. So it says partnerships and be cleansed and renewed. Yay! <laughs> the mothering energy of this beautiful fairy is echoed in the shape of the moon. <laughs> so pretty. She is waxing in the sign of the mother and is able to hold, receive, grow, Allow and love fertility energy. Uh, wait, what did we end up? She's waxing and in the sign of the mother and is able to hold, receive, grow, and allow in love fertility energy and the life force itself. You are now ready to take up your chalice, turn it to the capture of the flow 
of life and then drink from it fearlessly and fully. Oh my gosh, so awesome. I am so excited about this right now. I cannot even tell you. I hope you are too. This sounds a fantastic. Okay, divinatory meanings. Womb able to bring forth and nurture new life. The feminine sacred magic of bringing forth babies. Flow of feminine energy and moon cycles. Blossoming birth, serenity, female beauty. The taking of sacred waters. Oh my gosh, water is so, and sacred water is so important. Um, the first and the second phases of the triple goddess, maiden and mother. Uh, every birth is new life, a new chance. Princess of nature, mother is sacred experience and the wisdom of our senses, coming back into the wonder and knowledge of your sacred body, merging of selves uh, to create something new, acceptance and delight and love of emotion, babies, new life, flow after fast and stasis. Drinking more pure water, waters of fertility, allowing healing tears to flow, red and white spring of Avalon, Lourdes, sacred wells, rivers, ponds, and bodies of water are being watched over by Fay and will assist you in becoming fertile, both literally and metaphorically again. Oh my goodness. Wow, 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 wow. Just let me take a second. Oh my God. <laughs> so much powerful life force energy coming through with this message. Woo! And personally, I've been doing um, uh, a lot of work, putting all these meditations, getting channeling these meditations that have come, doing personal, private energy work um, with Gaia and Michael, um, Archangel Michael and Gabriel. Um, and so it's, there's been a lot of power coming to clear and heal and help people get online. And work with Gaia and this was just really intense. Like my head is just like, whoa. Um, and now with this card, we have four full moons here and I'm feeling like, let's see beyond these messages here. Let's, let's see these four full moons and how magical they are. Um, that, you know, to recognize how spiritual we are, to recognize that our dreams can definitely come true. We just need to kind of, what exactly are our dreams? What exactly is the best scenario? Sometimes if we're so like, go with the flow and us Sagittarians tend to be that way and tend to be like kind of fluttery, like I really feel the butterfly. Um, and that is, actually that my given name is Vanessa that means butterfly and um and I'm good in a lot of different ways so I can you know as long as it checks some boxes there the stuff that makes me really passionate I am happy doing a lot of different things so I'm very much open to the flow but what's been coming to me like I said in the, the beginning was what do we really feel like doing what do we really want like what's really driving us like I'm also an artist I know I wasn't always it was a finally like boom kind of thing and and that's a really big part of what I'm supposed to be putting out there and I just haven't been because I've been doing a lot of this other stuff, but it really, those last couple of days, it's like, that's still a really, that's how I balance my, my energies, my practical spiritual side and my spiritual, spiritual side. So we need that balance, but there's all this energy coming in that says the real us in our different balanced ways are finding its way to the surface with these full moons and this full moon coming up. This is the full moon reading. We've got four full moons here. I wonder if we're, should we play and 
see if we get another one. Why not? Uh huh. Got another one. Don't let pride get in your way. Full moon in Leo. Oh, that's a really good way to round this out because now we have the a net, we have four official ones from moonology the fifth um from the the grail fairy and really speaking to us about renewing and connecting and all this beautiful magic coming in and rebirthing and being fertile with creativity and art and that's been on my mind because i it's like very specifically like having that like boom it's time to do that uh, or writing if you're a writer i'm hearing that or creating videos if you do videos or photography or these different ways that we can channel our creativity don't let pride get in the way with the full moon in leo so we have our fourth full moon here wow um we're going to be asked to get out of our comfort zone and do some stuff that makes that kind of exposes us. Maybe we're going to be asked to reveal some things. Maybe we're going to be um, put in positions where we're it's kind of overwhelming, but we can just like decide to stay out of our, our own way um, is what I'm hearing. Don't let pride get in the way. Um, I'm feeling this more like just don't let Oh, oh wow. Um <laughs> interesting energies feeling. Woo. Um don't think that you're not ready is what I'm hearing. Don't think that you're not ready. You're ready. You're ready. It's 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 coming. It might be bigger or more overwhelming or or out of like the not even what you thought was going to happen and you're like don't don't be like oh yeah but i don't do that or that's not me or whatever let the real what is this one show the world the real you show the world the real you so there is this opportunity to really like come out be seen um be recognized and with this the the grail fairy it's like all you have to do is is hold up your cup because it's coming woza wowza look at this look at all these balloons oh my god look at this okay well if this is how we start the, the read <laughs> honestly not too surprised because lately all a lot of Sagittarius reads are have been really really like take a seat some shit's going down some serious serious stuff's going down um but all good all good uh you know kind of just really intense okay what else are we gonna do oh yeah the um the heart of fairy let's go there let's go to the heart of fairy um feels it feels like it's a full moon all this full moon energy it feels like it all of a sudden <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's gonna be five five uh days of feeling full moon that's when you know they're really intense full moons when you're feeling them days before okay Heart of Fairy, very powerful fairy oracle by Brian Froud. And um, this is um, typically about relationships, archetypes of, of ways we can feel or deal with people and stuff like that. So, or, or storylines and all that good stuff. Here we go. Card number 10, the captive man. The captive man, look at this. This one is intense. The captive man. Oh, we got another one. The paradox. Card number 52, the paradox. Interesting. Captive man and the paradox. Whoa. 
a, let's see what we got here. Okay, known as the Queen's Consorts, the captive man. The Queen's Consorts are the balancing male energies that complete, uh, that complement the Queens. They are nine consorts, each of whom are different aspects of male-female relationships. And by this, I mean male-female energy, not necessarily gender. The consorts aid, abet, and uh, stymie the energies of the queens, depending on their placement in a reading. They assume additional importance when seen alone or not in conjunction with a queen. So we have card number 10. Oh, let's read this little quote here. The fairies can appear and disappear. They can hide. You cannot. The fairies can shape shift and become something else. You can only become more yourself. But then that is why you are here. True, 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 true. Okay. The captive man. False perceptions, enthrallment, release from captivity. The captive man says a lot about the darker nature of fairy. Fairy women, especially fairy queens, have always desired human male companionship, and they aren't very particular about how they go about getting it. The captive man is blinded by fairy glamour and cannot see his way clear of the entanglement he is trapped in. Men and women can be trapped by false perceptions. We easily become enamored by someone or something that is not what it appears to be. We are blind and deaf to the warming to the warnings of our friends and continue to believe in something that may well be doing us harm and certainly becoming or keeping us in thrall uh, to false ideals. If the captive man appears, we must ask for clear sight. We need the help of our true friends, fairy and human, to see what blinds us and binds us. When we finally see the truth, we can begin to free ourselves from those harmful ties. Just as a fairy queen is loath to give up her human lover, a situation in which we are trapped by false perceptions may seem impossible to escape. Asking for true sight is the best way to begin. Conversely, we may we may be the captor, imprisoning a person or an idea when we should be giving it freedom. By releasing a thought or a person from captivity, we give it at the space to truly become what it needs to be. And we often find that it stays, uh, that it stays with us. So it's that whole, like, if you love it, set it free thing. Um, <laughs> so, I'm hearing let's go directly to page 50 or to card 52, the paradox, to see what we get. Wait, let's keep on passing this. It's the very end here. There we go. Okay. So. The tricksters. So the paradox is part of the tricksters in um, uh, in Fay. Excuse me. These are seven tricksters. They are just what their title says. They have wisdom to impart, but it's going to come in an unexpected form, and you may not like it. On the other hand, sometimes they are just what you need to resolve a situation or answer a tricky question. So the paradox, resolution of opposites, intuitive decision, tricky situation. It's good, but it's bad. It's right, but it's wrong. What is it? It's a paradox. <laughs> All fairies are paradoxical in some way. They don't easily fit in any one category. All good or all bad just isn't the way they are about, but 
this is slightly different. This fairy shows up when something is, as an example, good but bad at the same time and in equal parts. Confusing, isn't it? But you, you, uh, sorry, <laughs> confusing, isn't it? Have you ever been in a situation where you know that something is right thing to do, but if you do it, it will absolutely be the wrong thing to do? Your intellect tells you that this is a good thing, but your gut instinct tells you that it's a bad thing. This is the time to stop and really, really pay attention. Look for signs, examine your feelings, your intuition, your hunches. If you draw this card, uh, singing, you may want to take, what? Oh, singly. You may want to take another uh, to help clarify. If you have drawn this with, for example, the Queen of the Night or the Prince of Shadows, then be very, very careful about how you proceed with the relationship. The way won't be clear and something that feels right in this case may be really quite wrong or hold more danger than is wise to risk. On the other hand, if you draw the child with this card, then try looking at it from not just your grown up point of view, but from a child's point of view. Find the balance between the two and proceed from there. Okay, so both of these cards are basically telling us to pay attention. <laughs> um, and and that you must ask, yeah, when the, if the captive man appears, you must ask for clear sight because you're not, you're, ca you're held captive by things that you shouldn't be held captive by. And the paradox is saying it may be good, it may be bad at the same time, but I also feel like the captive man is making us see it that way instead of and 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 being in this state of like is it good is it bad yes and no like like that sort of thing so we need to see past that i'm thinking that these the energies that come with the other fairy card that we got the the uh the grail fairy from the other deck I'm really feeling that energy, the healing energy with the moon, the really going into water, connecting with water, wanting the truth um, to come through, to birth, that, that newness kind of thing is really going to help clarify what is a perceived paradox when in fact it's not, I, I feel. And, and being captive, um, I'm hearing like holding on to a certain way, a certain outlook about things, a certain way that things need to be and not opening up to different possibilities of doing things and kind of getting distracted with certain things and not seeing other things. And this is not the first time I feel that, that we've gotten this message, fellow Sag, where it's kind of like you're so focused here, you just are not seeing this thing right here that would kind of really help pull it all together. And I feel that I've had that kind of a blind spot too. Um, so it definitely helps to ask for help from our angelics, from our faith, from our friends incarnate, from our soul group and who we work with to say, what can, what do you see that I'm missing here? You know, and whatever your situation may be. Okay, moving on. Let's get into... Just put these here, all these full moons. I'm also feeling like like the full moon is just gonna clarify a lot. All this light from the full moon coming in, it is like, wow. Just all these full moons here is just really, really, And I feel kind of with this paradox card, it's kind of like the more you come into truth about something, the more you don't want it to be the truth. 
I really feel that's the paradox. Something like that. But again, we'll be able to clear out those energies and really see why it's the best thing and if that's okay. Like that sort of thing. Okay. Let's go into our light seer. Whoa, our whoa, our light seers tarot and see what we get, fellow Sagittarians. Whoa, six of wands coming out first here. Six of wands. Next card, four of cups, four of cups after six of wands. Oh, I'm so can't wait to show you what I just saw. Ten of Wands. Page of Cups. Page of Cups there. After Ten of Wands. The Hero Font. Great card here, the hero font. Boy. So before we move any further, let me show you what I just saw here. The six of wands and those four spotlights are literally like these four moons. Taurus, Aquarius, Leo, Pisces. And that's this, that was the six of wands. Okay. What's next? The death card. Is this serious? Oh, the death card. Oh. <laughs> I love the death card, actually. Rebirth and death. It was in reverse though. It did, I did first see it in reverse. So I'm gonna keep it in reverse. Next, Ace of Swords right after the death card. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And next, um, what is this? Six of Swords, we have Six of Wands, Six of Swords. Very good, very good. I dig it, I dig it. Okay, moving forward, we're moving forward. Energy is coming. We're taking our bigger ideas and we're moving forward. Um, it's like, yep, we're going to be, it's time. It's time to get out there. It's time to um, be seen for that sort of thing. Uh, whatever it is that we do. I still feel kind of like, okay, we're still gathering our energy. We're still needing to like come into I really feel like this is, you know, like that balance your practicality and your spirituality thing that it's kind of like that, like, okay, getting in balance, but and then and then going and this page of cups. It's just all about the feels. It's all about the feels. Like, how do we feel moving forward? What are we gonna do? Because we're connected. We're we're on this this road of ascension of going this awakening kind of happening on a whole new level of what we can accomplish and do. And I, I just also feel like the timelines. Like we see here with the. Uh, with the staircase there that we've got 
um, that we're just ascending, ascending. And the death and rebirth, it's about rebirth time. We've been through the death part and it's about rebirth. And that's why it's in reverse. We're in that rebirth. That's um, how, what we're getting with it, that very first fairy oracle, the grail fairy. It's all about rebirth. All these moods, all about rebirth. It's all about birthing. It's all about bringing in the energies. I really feel this is also kind of about another thing that this could be is just about really getting into um, our creativity. How are we going to create? What are we going to create? Um, those of us that are artists, just really getting in and feeling um, our creativity on the inside and then bringing it out. And just boom, just having that, like if we combine these together, if we combine these together and we have the energy of the four of cups and that ace of swords is just like so much information and in, um, creativity coming through, just like knowing, knowing with this ace of swords. Um, and then with the six of swords, we have six of wands, six of swords, catty corner to them to each other. Uh, really powerful with the six with the six. It's also the sixes represent abundance and uh, just using your power for of creativity to move forward. And this card, especially in this deck, always represents to me a this being guided by our our our. Uh, our angels, our spirit guides, the faith, whoever, whoever we're listening to, whoever's coming through to us, that they're, they're coming through and they're, we're really letting them guide us. We're really, really letting them guide us. Um, okay, let's get some clarification with the shadow scapes and let's just see what we get. Clarify, amplify these uh, these energies we already have here with that. I, I love that six of wands. It's amplify. It's like those are those four. Those are those four moons. Um, like wow, wow. That's like almost like eight moons now. I'm like getting energy from, but no, it's not. It's 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 just saying. It's literally right underneath here, and it's just like really interesting the way that that sits. Um, okay. Page of Wands over the Six of Wands. Three of Wands over the Four of Cups. Um, four of Swords in reverse over the Ten of Wands. The star over the page of cups, the star in reverse, nine of wands over the hero font, the hero font over the death card, the six of cups over the ace of swords, and the fool. Over the six of swords. Wow. Very, very cool. Okay. So page of wands over the six and clarifying, amplifying your six of wands. It's just, it's literally like so utterly The six of, or sorry, this page of wands just takes this to another level, just to a completely other level um, is what I'm seeing here. So it's like, yeah, that for sure. And, and that means just this coming into that, that moment of yes, this is exactly where we're, what I'm supposed to be doing. This feels really good. Um, I'm being divinely guided. There's all this magic coming in, and this page of wands is so magical. 
Um, three of Wands over the Four of Cups. Really looking out into the future. I think that the energy of getting practical, getting practical before um, like, and, and that just cleared the, the three of wands clarifying the four of cups is like, yeah, it really, it's amplifying these energies of really being contemplative about what you're going to do, but maybe, maybe too much. Maybe it's just like, don't think too hard. <laughs> It's just a lot, there's a lot of that energy here, just like contemplative, looking out, pensive, but it's like, okay, don't spend too much time there. Because remember, this is about, you know, kind of spotlight time and getting stuff out there and producing and being creative. And, and like we had, remember, this is the birthing time, not the, comp, not the, not the hibernating or, or really time to really sit around and think too much about stuff. It's really time to have, you know, action. Um, the four of swords in reverse over the 10 of wands. Yeah. So this movement is about just kind of being above the chaos and just going where where like the light is taking us that sort of thing um the star over the page of cups star is in reverse interesting how we have uh the nine of wands over the hierophant and the hierophant over the death card and then the six of cups over the ace of swords and six of swords and then the fool ending with the fool so yeah new beginnings birthing new beginnings um really going with the really going with the intuition the the paying attention to the light coming in and being really in that space like that the, this Pisces season that we're in is perfect for this because it's meant to give us this time to reflect inward and like, what do we need to thrive? What, do, what are our passions? What really makes me happy? Where am I going to put my energies? And, and start from there, start from there. Because I, I'm going to turn down my lights. Hold on one second. It feels so bright. Okay. I thought I maybe accidentally made my one light too bright, but it's not. It's where it should be, but it's just, I feel like it's just blowing everything out that I'm trying to show the camera. So, um, so I turned it off. Where was I? Um, oh, yes. So the fool, I think that's where I was, hopefully. The Fool, um, yeah, it's such a light card. These are hard to, to see. I'm sorry. If you want to look up the Fool on Shadowscape's Oracle, um, I don't have the bar, so I can't remember her name right now. Oh, wait, what's that? The Fool book? Yeah, by Stephanie Pi Moon La, P-A-I, or no, P-U-I-M-U-N-L-A-W. Shadowscape Tarot. Because it's just, I cannot show you. It just is not showing up. But anyway, um, yeah, too hard to see it. But the fool is coming up with a six of swords and bow. It's like heading off 
in a new direction with the six of swords. I'm going to show you that one. The six of swords. I, again, I just, I love that. Whoa. I love that card, especially in this, in this deck. And, and we, again, we have the six, the six is catty to each other, which I find really, really interesting. Um, this like amplifying these energies of, of this six of wands and this page of wands together. And that, th this energy of just being, um, very free, authentic, um, uninhibited, not feeling like you're, you know, self-conscious, uh, being okay to be seen, um, that sort of thing. Like, I, okay, I feel good about, you know, kind of coming out. Remember, there's this card here, show the world the real you. That was one of our first uh, uh, moons here, show the world the real you. And that's what this is too, is just kind of like soaking in the new divine light that's coming in, you know, it's really guiding us forward. It's coming into our third eye. We might get a lot of pressure with this, with this, <laughs> with this full moon. This may be doing so much to our um, third eye. So keep it clear, keep meditating to open up that third eye keep it you know get it open 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 i'm going to be doing a i think a very special specific third eye meditation to really help that because i feel that a lot of people are going to be like experiencing a lot of third eye pulses and incoming energies and and just letting go of dmt and and decalcifying all sorts of shit going on with the third eye I'm really, really feeling. So, um, and any kind of, of healing that you could do, energy clearing that you can do just to help you integrate all of this energy that's coming in, Sag, seriously. I mean, I know that this is totally on point for my life. And I know this isn't just a personal read for me. This is a read for, for, for us to, um, for fellow Sagittarians to really understand, uh, you know, the incoming energies that's happening, the new beginnings that's going on, the way that we can connect with our, um, our fake counterparts, uh, a time to reflect on what is really important, what we really need, how we're going to take care of ourselves, on a, on a really deep level, our inner child, that's another meditation that I did, um, clearing energy with the, with the, our inner child, our childhood experiences and, um, integrating that, that energy. So we can, so we can be led by that, by that inner child, passionate wonderment kind of energy that, that takes us to um to where really our soul wants us to go uh so new beginnings a lot of energy coming through with this full moon so much with this full moon i feel it's like i feel like it's the full moon right now. i'm not even kidding i wonder if it's gonna go away once i put these cards away uh and just stepping into into yourself allowing yourself to figure out exactly what you want to be doing going into march um, and let's see here. I do, I'm getting pulled to get into the, um, was it on the planet first, but I really feel the need to get into the Archangel Oracle here. Whoa, too much. Get into the Archangel Oracle here just to get some advice on how to handle these energies and make room for the new starting off as the, I love the full card. I especially love the full card and even the, um, in the, the light seers, um, the first, the first deck that we used. Okay. Here's the card. Brilliant idea with Archangel Uriel. Yes. Your idea is divinely guided. Please take action to bring your ideas into fruition so there it is again so brilliant idea being uh kind of divinely guided to get certain to getting our our divinely guided messages and going with it putting it into action 
uh, putting it into action and like letting it go forward with with uh <laughs> I'm hearing reckless abandon. Sorry, my light keeps going on. <laughs> um it's like if you're like it's ask it's answering a question like is this really and it's like yes this is really do it whatever it is but it also means like if you need to figure that out then figure that out i mean i myself just the other just this morning or i think it was this morning i was laying there going what do i really want to spend my time doing not just like what do i feel compelled to do but what do i really want to do is I always feel like I'm, I'm doing, I'm just going, I'm always going as guided, but this time it's just like, let's take some time to do just what you want to do because you've put out so much work lately that it's time to take some, some time to get into what's going to feel good for your inner child. And, you know, and that's usually creating, creating is usually what, what balances out the soul and the energy between the divine masculine and divine feminine and um and that top bottom left right hot cold energy that we can have to balance all the time so anyway um brilliant idea the archangel uriel coming in to tell us whatever we want to do we should do it whatever feels good um and that brilliant ideas are going to be coming we are going to be more and more inspired to create we are gonna you know just be really um, in that in that mode and um, and that is coming and we should do as much as we can with that um, because we do have new beginnings remember with that full card with all of these full moons coming in March is going to be very very interesting very dynamic um, please come back around for information as we get closer to the stargate. I will be putting out a meditation for the full moon in the next couple of days. So please be sure to subscribe to you and hit the bell so you can get notified of when I put that out or follow my podcast. All uh, meditations go on my podcast before they hit YouTube. As a matter of fact, sometimes 15 hours before, depending on what's going on with my life and how busy I am with clients and stuff and, and just all that stuff takes time to process and upload and download and blah, 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 blah. So it goes on my podcast first. So if you really want to get my meditations, my energy, um, energy healings, my energy updates, um, and, and sometimes I'll even do Oracle reads on my podcast. You can't see the cards, but I still do the messages. Um, but for the most part, like a hundred percent of the time, meditations go on there first, and then they make their way to YouTube through the process through my podcast. So anyway, so keep a lookout for the full moon um, meditation. It's going to be coming out in the next couple of days. If you haven't done those other meditations, um, the ones that I did recently for abundance and healing the money wound uh loving your body and connecting with your angel with your guardian angel and then um i'm spacing um oh integrating with the inner child and then the one that i did today was um overcoming fears releasing fears um, that had fear, shame, guilt, judgment, unworthiness, imposter syndrome, all of that stuff, and all the different ways that we can feel those and have those um, emotions. And so it's a really powerful uh, meditation for that. So there is lots to do. You can please, please still, you know, look into those. Please, I hope you're guided to do all of them over the course of a couple of days. Um, excuse me. Whew. Oh, it's two o'clock in the morning. No wonder I'm tired. <laughs> I'm now all of a sudden I'm getting tired. So anyway, now that I'm done with this. All right. Well, that's it, Sag. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your your uh your being guided here, your attention here. Uh please leave comments in the um, in the video, let me know if you resonate with this. And again, check me out on my website. If you haven't been there, I'm always ch um, changing and updated, not changing, but updating, putting new things out um, there as well. I do have new offerings, the Renew Now, like I was talking about, um, I think that was this video, uh, 
where it's just really awesome energy healing and at a very, very, very affordable prices. Two new offerings, Renew Now, Renew Now Deluxe. So check that out. Um, that would be great to do at any time, at any time. Okay. Bye, fellow Sag. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Bye now.